but you're on private property. Well, am I now? Uh -huh. So who are you and what do you think you're doing here? Well, now, it's a private property. I never could believe the dear God intended for men to cut up this beautiful earth into parcels for themselves, holding in captivity all living creatures upon the same, so as to trespassing. Now, there's no such thing, and I go where my foot leads me, which is according to the wind at me back. Mm, all right, stand aside. That I am. A lunatic. They locked me away for protecting eagles. For as any sane man knows, a thing of air and freedom must be killed. Well, that thing of air and freedom has been killing our sheep and chickens. I don't know what road you came in on, mister, but you better find that road and get. Surely enough be keeping the poor creature. That's worse than killing it. Let it go. May he pick out your eyes. You got a horse? Horse? It's the rich who ride. A walking man is Patrick Madigan. Oh, a tramp. Huh? From Canada to this beautiful valley, spoiled only by the presence of yourself. You walked all the way from Canada. There were times when it was necessary to swim. Git. Shall we have another go at it? You show your tail on this property again, and I'm sure we will. Private devil, and the two of you in the cage you built for him. Take this. It's good prime beef. Come on, take it. 
Audra, I wonder what we're going to think of Brother Nick with a face like a lace curtain. Nick, the book says he's supposed to be blindfolded at first. The book. And it also says each time he takes food from you, just as he swallows it, you're supposed to give him a certain whistle. Ah, how about turkey in the straw? <laughs> oh, now, will you two clear out of here? I'm trying to tame this bird, and I'm not getting any help from you. You're not getting much help from the bird, either. What is it, Mac? Did you post a notice in Stockton that we want to hire a dynamiter? No, we didn't. Now, listen, Nick, you're going about this all wrong. Yes, we did. What do you mean, all wrong? Well, there's a fellow out there who claims to be our man. Well, in the first place, what you have to do is teach this bird how to read. What do you mean, advertise for a dynamiter? The mine, Sundown Hill. While well, your engineer friend's been poking around trying to make up his mind, I decided to go ahead and get a dynamiter. Do it my way. Now, Nick, you know you're never going to get the major to agree to that. Until we closed that mine, there was an accident for every pound of gold we took out of it. Now, we just don't need it. But it's there. So is the record. The record? Fifty-year-old record. They went at it their way. Where is he? Right outside. <laughs> Take over. <laughs> Bear a bit on the handle like a good lad. Glory be. I told you to. be my pleasure someday to open that hard head. Now it's business I'm on here. So if you'll just send out your foreman. Holy angels. Is it you I've come to see? If you're a dynamiter, why didn't you say so out there? I was otherwise engaged. You're a pretty good dynamiter? I have that talent. Where have you worked? Oh, well, this is my brother Jared. He's a lawyer. Oh, a lawyer now. Would you care to hear an opinion of lawyers and judges? Not particularly. Just nice straight answers. Where have you worked? Any mining. Well, now, isn't that where I got my training? Digging English coal to warm English noses. Well, that's very interesting. But what would you do about rocks so rotten that a mine had to be closed? Oh, and what's your religion? And how do you vote? And uh, what's the fashion of your nether clothes? Now, is it a dynamiter you people want? I can sharpen a pencil with a stick of the stuff if my word's not good enough. Good day to you. No, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Jared, he's already here. Famous time. Uh, the least we can do is take him out to the mine, let him take a look at it, and then he can tell us what he thinks the chances are. All right, Nick, you do that. Then pay him for his time. All right, let's get out there. Well, I'll have a bite to eat first, if you've the good manners to offer it, and a drop to wash it down. And the shirt. For if I'm to dine, I'll not sit naked. And you might modify that master's tone in your voice. You've not hired a flunky. Air bubbles. Weak spots. The whole thing will come down and you just holler, won't you? You posted that warning? Here, when we open the tunnel. The knock of Flanagan's donkey. Back. Slowly now. And don't touch anything. Come on. So special about Flanagan's donkey. Well, he'd browse the edge of the cliffs each and every morning, heedless of the danger. And then one morning, the cliff top broke loose and tumbled into the sea, carrying all. But was Flanagan's fortunate animal there? No. Correct. He didn't thistles and choke to death only the day before. Lucky.
A lovely place. Some coal here and there and a few lads dying of the consumption. It would be a mirror of my childhood. I've seen it. What do you say? A sensible thing to do? Leave it alone. Barkley! Barkley! Wilson! Barkley, where are you? Up here. I figure they drop the whole inside of this hill, compact it, and then start again from scratch, open cut mining. Oh, the torment of the rich to become richer. Ah, there we are. Told you, yeah? Now, what's all this nonsense about a dynamiter? Patrick Madigan, Major Wilson, ex-British Corps of Engineers. Madigan, eh? If there's a pimple on my nose, would you be kind enough to tell me? Madigan. Army? Not yours. Oh, yes. Ireland. Belfast. Or Dublin. If it is, I've not committed it to memory. I understand from Jared this man appeared out of nowhere, as it were. Came in answer to my notice. References? Recommendations? What papers establishing that he may be indeed trusted with dynamite? Haven't you heard? It's become an Irish specialty. Major, when I hire a man, I'm the one that fires him. No one else. You don't need a dynamiter at all. You could recut these passages, square timber them. You said that'd be too expensive. And at best would only postpone a catastrophe. Nick, this hill is unstable. Then why not my idea? I know, too risky. He says it's not sensible. Oh, but did I say I'd not be willing to try? Well, now, you sure change your mind quick enough. Well, now, it's no more sensible than it was before, but... Sensible is for the man who means to die in bed. A series of charges, each setting off the other, it would breach the walls, blow the overhead to dust, and down would come the whole interior, leaving not a space the size of an egg. What about the water? Well, now, that would be a problem for the engineer. But one that shouldn't be insolvable <laughs> with the application of a little ingenuity. It's getting a little stuffy in here. You're going to do it, with or without you. Very well. I shall return to the house and offer every sound reason for abandoning this mad project. And then offer to supervise it with a different dynamiter. Because of that chap is the man I believe him to be. Your Mr. Patrick Madigan is a very violent man. And having him on your ranch would be like sheltering a time bomb. Kelly lay on his back and O'Brien crawled to him in the dark and felt for a sign of life. Oh, Kelly, he moaned. Kelly, my dear friend, I feel a wetness upon you. I'm just afraid I am to think of what it may be. Well, strike a match, whispers Kelly, and have a look. And O'Brien does, and Kelly asks, is it blood? Tell me the truth, O'Brien. Oh, blood it is, moans O'Brien. There's blood all over you, Kelly. Praise be, cries Kelly. I was afraid it was the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Madigan, what kind of country is that Ireland place? Well, it's a land of the Leprechauns and the Kellys and the O'Briens and the Blarney Stone. <laughs> but that's not all there is. Oh, it is a land for poets to tell about, not a fool like me. Oh, it is the smoke of peat. And it's the slow creak of carts along the road. And the little Connemara ponies. Sweet land it is, though often sad. Oh, come on now, we'll have none of that. None of that blasted funeral music. Alive she is! Alive is Ireland! And what an only to be free! and suddenly it was 8 o'clock. 
Well, how are you, Major? Well, I'm not sure. We were just discussing Mr. Madigan. Isn't he the most amazing man? If he's not talking, he's dancing. If it's not that, it's something else. He's like a runaway train. Well, I'm starving. I think I'll get something to eat. Don't forget to make the hood for that eagle, huh? First thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> yes, I must say I'm not entirely surprised that Audra and seemingly everyone else around here is captivated by his charm. They're all charming. All the terrorists in the Society of Fenians. And responsible for sabotage, arson, and the brutal murders of good British soldiers. Oh, thank you. Yes, Mr. Madigan is quite efficient at dynamite. His bombing of Clark and Well Prison, the circumstances of his escape from England, devilish good demonstrations of that fact. But your Mr. Madigan is guilty of treason against the Crown. Has he been tried? He will be. Oh, well, maybe I misunderstood you. I thought I heard you say he was guilty. Well, perhaps that was a bit unfair, but he is a wanted man, Mr. Barclay. He's a rebel. You told me about his back. Surely that's proof enough. Proof? I'm sure he's been flogged. It's customary with these fellows, you know. No, I didn't know. Oh. It's the only kind of treatment a rebel understands, ma'am. Major, do you have any kind of official standing in this matter? No, but I am a British subject. And this man has committed crimes against the Crown. Ah, but that happened in your country, not here. But they are crimes. Seems to me that's a matter of opinion, Major, not fact. The law is a fact, Mr. Barclay, and breaking the law is a fact. Well, now, that's always highly debatable. You see, the fact is, Mr. Madigan is a political fugitive. He committed crimes in Great Britain, but they're not punishable in the United States. And so I've asked you to accommodate me. To, uh, shall we say, immobilize a, well, shall we say, a suspicious character until my government can arrange to have him return for trial. We can't do that. But my dear lady... Major, the day I find a name on our payroll that is spotless, that will be someone who hasn't lived very long or very much. People are hired for what we want them to do, and all we ask is that they stay clean here and give us an honest day's work for their wages. Now, you say this man, Madigan, is wanted, and will we be good enough to move him a few steps closer to the rope? Well, we call that bounty hunting. And the answer is no. But I've described bombings to you, treason. Those fellows are rebels. Well, that depends on which side wins, doesn't it? We call ours patriots. Nick, your revolution took place a hundred years ago. It was a revolution. Let me say I... I understand your ideals. I rather admire them. But you see, the chap we're talking about is associated with riot, insurrection, property damage, and considerable bloodshed. And if my country wishes to try Mr. Madigan for his crimes, it will find a way to take him. Will it? It's a very old country, Mr. Barclay. And very experienced. I'm, I'm sure that we're not going to let this affect our friendship in any way. Oh, I hope not. And that I may still look forward to supervising the work of the old mine. That's up to you. Thank you, my dear boy. Because I expect to find it most interesting. I can't offer you anything but my company. Madigan! Mac, know you're sleeping out here. What's wrong with the bunkhouse? Well, it's too crowded and I can't stand snoring, so I'll just take this barn and a little nest of hay. Major Wilson tells me that you've killed quite a few people with your dynamiting. Uh, not that I know of. Not that you know of! Well, now, I call that pretty careless. It's the way of the work. Well, you stay away from that kind of work while you're around here. And here's fair warning. If anyone gets killed on this spread, it better be you. We're gonna have an early breakfast. We'll get the wagon and go on to the stock and pick up the things you need. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, you do mean to tame him. Civilize him. Make him hunt coyotes instead of lambs and chickens. Oh, fine. And as everyone knows, 
He'll be much better than any of your traps and your rifles. He'll be much more useful trained than he is now. You take my advice, you stay away from those talons. Good night. And good night to you, sir. Useful. Not what you are. Oh, stop hating the man. Think how fortunate you are. A home to come to. Warm and dry. He'll feed you only the best. And he'll nurse you and hatch you and proclaim to the world how clever you are. How obedient. And what does he ask in return, this kind and generous man? Only that you take a master. That is such a small thing, you foolish bird. Take a master. Quite a beauty, ain't you? Mm -hmm. Breakfast will be in ten minutes. Well, do I have to wait for him? Or is there room enough on the stump for the both of us? Won the first battle. For hunger is a precious weapon, but it costs nothing at all. Lie, you sparrow. What do you think you're doing? Easy. Easy. That's it. Let that bird fly off with that hood on him, blinding him, and he'll starve to death. Why don't you come down out of the sky and start using your head? What? I'd change the habit of a lifetime. Oh, we'll have at it yet. It was written before we were born. <laughs> you fellas must be fixing to blow up the whole valley. <laughs> that would be against the law. Ah, oh, the times I would have become a church goer for a little bit of this stuff. Oh, I'm sure you've been able to improvise quite effectively, sir. Thank you, sir. And such an expert hardly needs me to help him measure fuse and count blasting caps. So if you'll excuse me, I have a bit of business. <laughs> your business, do you? Here you are, sir. Oh, yeah. Let's see, British... British Embassy. Hey, reckon this town's getting important, huh? Let's uh, see, uh, Hubert Wilson Major Rhett. What's Rhett? It means retired. Oh, yeah, sure. It, uh, uh, well, that'll be two dollars. Uh, 
Pencil and paper right over there, mister. Uh, did you hear the story about the skin flint who uh, touched off the firecracker before Christmas Eve? Uh, no, wait, wait. What are you doing? And then he walked into the house and told his family that Father Christmas would not be appearing that year. For the truth of the matter was that the dear old gentleman had just been shot. Shot. I've been to funerals where the hearse moves faster. <laughs> Hang on, boys! Hey, easy! This is dynamite! Well, then don't let it fall! <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a terrible day for the English! <laughs> Clear the way! That's good, boys. Over here. All right, boys. Put it right there. Wet. Look bad. Reduces hydrostatic pressure of water on the dynamite cartridge. Dear, dear. You see, when one plans a series of these, the idea of producing a progressively intensified shockwave. If one of the dynamite charges fails to go off, the series is broken. Only parts of the interior will collapse, blocking off the parts that are not collapsed. Would I be detecting gas in here? Oh, or considerable it is. Better break it off, boys. We'll clear it. Continue tomorrow. Now, what's the blather you're feeding the poor man? The charges I place go off. In wet boreholes? Even under wet bridges. Well, if you gentlemen will excuse me, I have a ranch to run. You'll have to carry your little war on by yourself. You are the man I thought you were. Did you have doubts, indeed? You showed none in the telegram. A telegram? There. I think I sleep with an Englishman aware of me naked throat. Impudent. I can understand how you acquire those scars on your back. Scars? Hey, those are me medals! Oh, you Englishman. You don't see the humor in it, do you? I say medals. And you think, why not? It is where a slave would be wearing them on his back. Well, Patrick Madigan is no slave. My father and his father before him, they were your Irish footboys. They were your Irish slaves, not I. I never bent but to pick up a cobblestone. And when the redcoats rode in to burn our village, reprisal it was called, one of them came at me on a horse so tall, charging at a small lad with a stone in his hand. A traitor with a stone in his hand. And in the flat of that sword coming down on the lad's back, like a whip, a whip, till I lay in the mud and could not scream of the mud in my mouth. May my brain rot if I forget it. If I forget the salt tears of my mother burning in the wounds as she kissed them. Oh, what you've done to my land. 
what you do to us each black day. And do you think a million Patrick Madigans will not fight you if it means a million will die? Will we not blast your bridges and bomb your courts and kill your soldiers and spit into your hearts until we shake the roof tree of your world? Till out of fear and nothing else you grant us our freedom. Freedom to do what? To break any law just as the thought comes to you? Destroy property? Play with men's lives? A wagon loaded with dynamite? Just because you think that's what it means to be free? I came at you. Obviously. And the four men in that wagon. Did you think it right in the name of freedom to imperil their lives? I've seen men like you in the army. Violent, irresponsible, undisciplined. You're a man who must be ruled. And that's your answer, is it? To all the blood and the weeping and the ache in the heart of us. I'm not your judge. You'll have your day in court. My only duty is to send this telegram. You'll send nothing. And you'll say nothing. Stand aside. Now here's an Englishman without a whip. And not one soldier at the sight of him. And here's Patrick Madigan. Who bombed Clerkenwell prison and Kilmainham jail. And never felt the face of an Englishman against the back of his hand. <laughs> change your dream. How easy that was, huh? You know what the trouble with you is? You just don't know. Too used to being up on that mountain top, aren't you? Yeah. His master's voice. Did you just get in? Well, it was a slow ride in the dark and alone. You and the major still at odds? Well, not anymore. Good. A man came to the mine to see him, a stranger. They spoke a while and uh, then rode off together. Where? They neglected to confide in me. A stranger, what do you look like? Oh, two legs, two arms, a head. I was not close. Keep your hands off that bird. Well, he's yours. Now you're getting the hang of it. I wish I knew what happened to Wilson. Didn't say anything to you, huh? A few things about my being uncivilized. And I believe I mentioned tyranny to him. Nothing about staying in town. Fed wasn't slept in last night. Maybe the man.
man's leading a secret life. We should have a better look at that stranger. Well, it's this trouble with my tongue. It's so long it is, it steals the strength from my eyes. Where's Mac off to in such a hurry? He's going to get the sheriff, Nick. It's Wilson's horse. A sheep herder found him near the mine, Wilson, too. He's dead, Nick. Probably was an accident. He could have been thrown from his horse. On the other hand, it could have been... Could have been the stranger. Maybe. This was found on him. It's a copy of the telegram that Wilson was sending to the British Embassy. Madigan. Now, there's no proof of that yet. Well, it was Madigan. It's all my fault. Where do you think you're going? Just take one guess. And what will you do, Nick? Go out and hog time and bring him in? Just have some two-dollar lawyer cut him loose? Or maybe you'd like to string him up by his thumbs till he says exactly what you want him Yes, to. I just might do that. And that would be exactly wrong. Now, I say we play for time. We simply say that the Major was killed in a riding accident. Now, that'll give the Sheriff and us time to check around. If there was a stranger, believe me, he left a trace somewhere. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, what about Madigan? He's staying with us. He has to feel safe. And he could be innocent, you know. <laughs> Just be sure you keep a watch on that hair trigger of yours, Nick. Now, the Major was a good man and a good friend, but we don't want blood for blood. All we want is the one who did it. <laughs> Let's try it. Wait before Lord Dynamite. Let's go. All right, get along, lad. I'll be right with you. It's all there in your eyes. You caught another eagle. Just keep your hands right where I can see them. We found the Major dead. Now, now, think a minute. It was not murder. And I can see that's what you're thinking. That's exactly what I'm thinking, and so's the Sheriff by this time. Now, are you gonna come peaceable, or you want me to drag you out of here? Barkley, your way is of persuasion. But Patrick Madigan is an eagle of another sort. And it's my home I prefer to go to, and not any other. What are you doing, the boss. Well, he's still in there. I'm... Dead? Well, if not, it's an ugly way to be going. Get the picks and shovels. Let's well, go. The shovel's not in a hundred years. Not dig man for what good it'll do. Come on with the shovels.
In him yet. There's no time. I thought you went for help. I got all the help I need right here. <laughs> all right, boys, take cover. bring it all down again. to stop now and debate the foolish sentimentality of Patrick Madigan. Why worry any more about me than Wilson? Barkley, I could never stand by and let an animal be caged or a human being suffer in darkness. Now, you were trapped here without even a window to watch a flight of birds. And that's worse than any prison I ever occupied and hated. Uh, this modern talk is only tolerable with a tank and a three of beer, so let's get out of here. I've developed a savage uh, thirst. Uh, now, listen, Madigan, you let it. Oh, I thought I'd humble myself, but all right, I'll carry it. Okay. 
All right, give me a hand. All right, get him out to the mine office. And one of you fetch a doctor. Taste of dynamite! I just stay where you are! Suppose you tell us what happened. You'd never believe it. Try us. Patrick Madigan is not going to hang or be put in a cage! Ah! I wonder what it feels like. I kind of know how it feels.
did this. but you're on private property. Well, am I now? Uh, so who are you and what do you think you're doing here? Well, now, it's a private property. I never could believe the dear God intended for men to cut up this beautiful earth into parcels for themselves, holding in captivity all living creatures upon the same. So as to trespassing, and there's no such thing, and I go where my foot leads me, which is according to the wind at me back. Mm, all right, stand aside. Lunatic? Aye, that I am. A lunatic. They locked me away for protecting eagles. For as any sane man knows, a thing of air and freedom must be killed. Well, that thing of air and freedom has been killing our sheep and chickens. I don't know what road you came in on, mister, but you gotta find that road and get. Surely you not be keeping the poor creature. That's worse than killing it. Let it go. Maggie, pick out your eyes. You got a horse? Horse? It's the rich who ride. A walking man is Patrick Madigan. Oh, tramp. Huh? From Canada to this beautiful valley, spoiled only by the presence of yourself. You walked all the way from Canada. There were times when it was necessary to swim. Git. Shall we have another go at it? You show your tail on this property again, and I'm sure we will. Devil, and the two of you in the cage you built for him.
to meet the brute who did this. but you're on private property. Well, am I now? Uh -huh. So who are you and what do you think you're doing here? Well, now, as a private property, I never could believe the dear God intended for men to cut up this beautiful earth into parcels for themselves, holding in captivity all living creatures upon the same. So as to trespassing, and there's no such thing. And I go where my foot leads me, which is according to the wind at me back. Mm, all right, stand aside. That I am. A lunatic. They locked me away for protecting eagles. For as any sane man knows, a thing of air and freedom must be killed. Well, that thing of air and freedom has been killing our sheep and chickens. I don't know what road you came in on, mister, but you better find that road and get. Surely you not be keeping the poor creature. That's worse than killing it. Let it go. Maggie, pick out your eyes. You got a horse? Horse. Just the rich who ride. A walking man is Patrick Madigan. Oh, tramp. Huh? From Canada to this beautiful valley, spoiled only by the presence of yourself. You walked all the way from Canada. There were times when it was necessary to swim. Git. Shall we have another go at it? You show your tail on this property again, and I'm sure we will. Private devil, and the two of you in the cage you built for him. Take this. It's good prime beef. Come on, take it. Oh, Audra, I wonder what we're going to think of Brother Nick with a face like a lace curtain. Nick, the book says he's supposed to be blindfolded at first. The book. <laughs> 